Welcome back to Monroe Live, everybody. Today we have a special treat. We're going to do some load testing on the shelves. So Adam and I are going to open these bad boys up and see what they can handle in the fridge as they stand right now. So let's get right to it. So first we have the Sub-Zero fridge, which has uh, six gallons of milk on it right now. We weighed these. These are 8.8 .8 pounds yep. as it sits. Yep. So 8.8 .8 times six roughly nine times six, about 54 pounds. It's handling it just, fi just fine, but have you ever had a, a big Thanksgiving meal or, or dinner where you have so many leftovers that you end up just stuffing your fridge full and wondering if your shelves can actually handle it? Well, we're gonna put this to the test right now to see if it can. So Adam, grab some extra milk. Alrighty. I'll just take it. So this will handle 108 pounds, no problems whatsoever. Yeah. And rather than repeat this. It's not deflecting too bad either. On the Frigidaire, I think we need to rig up a fixture so that we can take these to a much higher limit. Yeah. And so we'll go figure that out and Adam's gonna talk about the construction of these shelves and more to come in a little bit. So we've got the Frigidaire shelf here and the uh, Sub-Zero shelf to the right. Uh, both are made out of steel uh, support arms, glass, glass uh, bodies that are encapsulated in plastic. The plastic secures each glass shelf to the steel uh, support arm. So the uh, Sub-Zero attached their plastic frame to the metal support bracket by overmolding. You can see a little bit of flash from where the plastic is shot and then encompasses the metal support arm. Odds are there's probably, you know, features in the top of the, the arm that the plastic can either go into, whether it's holes or notches, to kind of create a pattern to, for, you know, adhesion. But you can also tell that it's overmolded because the parting line of where you insert the, the metal bracket into the mold when you shoot this plastic part is right at the top. So you basically set this into the mold and then shoot the plastic around it. And that's kind of how you get an overmolded part. But that's evidence of overmolding. Uh, this metal su support arm is two and a quarter millimeters thick. Uh, you can see its hook structure, you've got about 11.3 millimeters of, of width above the hook. Now, how does this compare to the Frigidaire? The Frigidaire uh, actually is quite more impressive. It's I think it's better designed. There's a, a few factors that they accounted for when designing the mechanical strength aspect of it. The thickness of the Frigidaire bracket isn't, oh, it is two and a quarter. <laughs> I thought it was thicker than that. Maybe I measured the wrong point. Now it's two and a quarter, it's the same, but they stamped in features, gussets, to increase the cross-sectional uh, width of the structure. So when you're doing beam bending, if you add gussets like this, it makes the body of the arm a lot more rigid and distributes stress more evenly through the structure, or it, it accepts more stress. Oh, oh I, I think I, gra yeah, I grabbed the wrong one. So the thickness above it, was the other one was 11.3, let's see what this is. It's 9.8, so the thickness above that hook is a little bit thinner than the uh, Sub-Zero. But we like the support arm of the Frigidaire better because of the gussets that they've stamped into it to increase uh, mechanical strength. And they didn't use glue to attach the plastic frame, they used rivets, which is in my opinion, a much more robust mechanical attachment. Uh, the, the other, oh, do you, do you want to yeah, talk about the, the other features? The Frigidaire is slightly longer because it's not a counter depth. Yes. So there, it is a little further out, but when we measure the load testing on this, we're gonna go to the edge of the glass because they designed 
these shelves to have your, your items sit here. If you have a spill, it runs to the edge and catches on the bead. There is a bigger edge here for spills to catch on on the Frigidaire versus the Sub-Zero, but the amount of glass width is wider on the Sub-Zero because it's just a really small edge out here. And we bought 571 pounds of milk and crates to load these up. The roof here is on about 20 feet tall. I don't think these will hold 571 pounds, but we're about ready to find out what the limit of these are. So um, we're gonna get the, the bucket in place and see what these can handle. All right, everybody, here we go. We're gonna load test the Frigidaire shelf first. Um, we have 571 pounds of milk and crates. I'm gonna start with one and then we'll go with two, three and see how far yeah. it goes. And then I'll load up the rest. So here is 38.1 pounds. Make sure that's centered. It is centered. Okay. And it's loaded just on the glass. That's good. There we go. 76.2 pounds. Oh. Oh, we're not, not, might not make it too far. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Okay, go up. <laughs> All right, you're good. I got, I'm going to have to let go of this. <laughs> So it didn't handle too much. Uh, what was that? Four full crates? Yeah. Mm. I'm going to have to let go of this. <laughs> All right, so the Frigidaire failed after we put the fourth one of these on there. So the four 38.1 pound a crate of milk. And what's interesting is the glass didn't break, the plastic didn't break, the force of the cantilever bent the reaction point on the lower part of the hook here. So if you if we, we can hook this back in, well, you see the force that was reacting on these uh, lower pieces bent. It stopped at the gusset. So it actually, it bends in between the gusset geometry. So you've got, this stayed fairly rigid, but it bent along this curve. So if the gusset was possibly continuous from there to there, you might have actually been able to support that. Now the biggest shock of all of this is that I bought way too much milk. Uh, <laughs> I thought we were gonna be able to stack a lot more up on these than, than what it held. So let's get the Frigidaire loaded up and this is cleaned up a little bit. And Oh, in, let's get the Sub-Zero in, in fairness, uh, you, two Electrolux Frigidaire, you can't stack that many gallons of milk in their fridge, no, no matter how, which way you, you slice it. So they designed it for a proper load for their application. All right, now it's time to test the Sub-Zero shelf. We did notice that it has a, a little bit deeper of a drop here on the, the portion of the metal, so we'll see if that helps it at all. I'm gonna start with the first 38.1 pounds, get it nice and centered. Center that. Is it centered this way? Mm -hmm. That's important. All right. All right. And away we go. It's locked in. What do you All have to right. say, Adam? I'm uh, 
I'm impressed. So what do you think is making it hold up? Is it the the le- the, the depth of the of the arm? Yeah. You I think, think so? it's I think it's the depth of the arm. And here we were fo- I was focused on the gussets and the cross section of the arm when we should have been worried about the uh, thin points near the attachment to the wall. All right. That's interesting. Well that and it makes sense if you were to do a stress analysis of that part, most of the stress is going to be back at where it cantilevers off the wall. All right. Keep going. I want to see Alrighty. this. All right, good. Nope, nope, nope. I think our ID4 just got a little bit of a car wash. Glass didn't break. And it did the same thing, except notice where it yielded. There's a larger section of the metal that took even stress distribution as compared to the um, Frigidaire bracket. The Frigidaire bracket had two gussets, and the gussets had a gap between it of just regular two and a two and a quarter inch thick steel and that's where all of the stress concentrated between the gussets so that's a a lesson in design guidelines for a beam if you want to do stress dis- distribution you want to make sure that your cross section is consistent throughout the whole beam and that's it's kind of it's a kind of a cool engineering uh observation and, and lesson so the failure of this happen across the larger length of the beam. And as uh, I said in the bucket, or as stated earlier, there was a, on the uh, Electrolux or Frigidaire design, they had a gusset here and then a longer gusset there, and they had a smaller uh, or a short section of a thinner cross section of the beam where they had all of their stress concentration, whereas this cross section was consistent all the way through the beam and it was able to distribute the stress more evenly Rather than creating a stress concentration between the two gussets, this distributed further down the beam, and you can see, as a result, the deformation is in a larger area, which is probably why it was able to hold a larger load. All right, everybody. So that's going to wrap it up for this episode. I rest, rest assured all the milk that survived is going to go, going to go home with the employees, so that's going to be exciting. Everyone gets a gallon or two of milk. And stay tuned for more as we test more of the Sub-Zero fridge and the Frigidaire. And we appreciate you tuning in as always. Thanks. Bye. See you later, Internet.